This conference will now be recorded. Good evening and welcome. This is the first meeting of the Town Council of Wallingford, Connecticut's subcommittee meeting on the American Rescue Plan Act funds. We're going to start with a moment of silence followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. In the Pledge of Allegiance, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to do a quick roll call of the members of the subcommittee. Autumn Allenson. Here. Christina Tata. Here. Jason Sandry. Here. Vinny Testa. Is that him loading in? Maybe. I'm here, and then I'm going to note that it looks like Councilor Sam Carmody is also in attendance. All right, so we formed this committee, the subcommittee, after the last council meeting to figure out what to do going forward uh, as it's been determined that the council is in charge of these funds and how to manage them. Um, I sent everybody an email just saying, bring your ideas, let's try to hit the ground fast and running. Um, I, I, I mean, the way this will probably go is more like a workshop. So if the, the members, the members of the count, the subcommittee, the members of the subcommittee, um, let's try and I'm going to run it loosey goosey, just kind of talk when you need to, I mean, wave or I'll, we'll call on you. Um, if members of the public need to say anything or want to say anything, uh, we will have a dedicated time. Uh, just I'll ask for it, ask for it in the chat. And then uh, we'll see how it goes after that. Um, Sam, uh, same thing for you, though. If you, if you need to say anything, just let us know. And uh, you can jump in during the counselor time as well. Um, so let's start with the counselor time. Does anybody want to go first with addressing either what happened or where they think we should go forward with? No? Does everybody want me to go first? Or Jason? And uh, noted at 6.34, Vinny Testa has arrived. Well, I, I was just going to say, Tom, I don't, I don't know if you've got an intro that you wanted to give. I, I could go after that. So did you want to introduce my, you know, like format style topic or? Yeah, that was it. That was my intro. Okay. I mean, I, I'm going to keep it simple at first. Um, I really think that we should be focusing at least a subset of this money towards things that we can do that will be wide wide impacting across the town. I mean, just looking around at other communities and some of the things that other towns have done, I, I would, you know, Cheshire, they executed against one of the parks that they were, they, they had on the dock to build. Um, you know, we don't have to commit the entire amount either. If we had, I'm just gonna throw a community pool out there. It's a $7 million project. We've already got a million dollars put on the side. One of the big issues with community pool was the argument that this whole renovation of the pool was too steep. Well, we, we could make it palatable now. We've got a million dollars on the side. Maybe we could put two or three million of these funds into that and we could bond the rest. Um, or just do, you know, even a million dollar match to the million that's in there and bond the rest. Um, but I think by and large, we should be looking at things that anybody could use, like the senior center as just a generic example. We, we put that together for the, you know, for the use of the seniors in the town. Only the seniors can use it effect, you know, effectively. You know, younger people and younger generation people are not in there now, but supposedly everybody would be eligible one day if they stayed in town long enough. Community pool is the same thing. It's there if anybody wants to use it, um, or a park. 
is there if anybody wants to use it. Some people will, some people won't, some people have their own pool, whatever the case might be. I think we should be gravitating some of this funding towards things of that nature. On, on the other, for the other aspect of some of the other things that we should be considering, I'm gonna kind of echo some of my comments from the council meeting. We, we have entities that already have a pulse in the community on things that are, are needed. Now, we've got WCI and um, the, the other business elements. Now, they've got a pretty good pulse on uh, the Economic Development Commission. That's what I wanted to add as well. Have a pretty good pulse on what some of the businesses could use. We could certainly look to use some of the funding towards them as well, even though they've got some other, you know, other avenues or had other avenues that many people didn't have access to. But I think by and large, we should be looking community wide. And then kind of going back to what I was saying at the last meeting, things like SCAL, things like United Way, um, uh, the, the food, uh, Connecticut Food Bank, these places know right away where there's, there's direct need. And I really want to go back to the comments that I said about looking for multipliers. I want to I want to be able to put some of this money that will get an added value going forward. Where one of the one of the different nonprofits could put it towards childcare, daycare, after work care, and then that allows people to get back to work or work longer, and not have to worry about coming home to get their kids, and and um, you know and so on. So I kind of want to emphasis where my mindset is as, as I kind of listen to other folks. Um, so thanks a lot, Tom. Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Who's next? Autumn? Um, I do want to echo some of some of that. And, and again, I think that um, like uh, Councillor Zandri um, and a lot of, I, I imagine the folks on the phone, because I recognize a lot of names here. Um, I do think that we should we have a responsibility to um, ensure that the nonprofits who are providing services are um, are, are accounted for, uh, you know, in with maybe a, like a, a higher standard of need. Um, I also I have hesitance I have some hesitation because like. Uh, to spend this money on pool related activities um, or actually town related activities and it doesn't it's not that I don't want the pool because I do want the pool and I get that this this opportunity is presenting itself my problem is that the pool operates on a membership basis that they charge for that we charge for even for residents in town and the people who are using social services are not going to be the people who are going to be affording even the membership it's I know it's not wildly expensive to a lot of us but it's not something I, I still feel like um, you know renovating the pool is not something that is going to be uh, entirely fair to everyone involved um, I think that if we were to do something like this, we should at least also consider a stipulation that we waive some sort of fees on the pool. If this is something that all like, you know, obviously we're not here making decisions. We're just throwing out ideas. But at the same time, I am really hesitant to spend money on something that we're charging for. It would be different if we're making a park or something that people can walk in and walk out and it's free for use and it's completely community centric. But if we do something like renovate the pool, which we arguably were already gonna do, and I know it was delayed because of COVID and now it's delayed more because of hesitancy to do the project during COVID. Um, but I do, I do think that this is something that's already earmarked and not applying ARPA funds to it doesn't necessarily mean we don't want it. It just is not, um, it's not the priority with which we're uh, focusing these fund these funds. 
And I do, you know, we've gotten some emails and um, about the pool in particular as a way to spend the money. And I totally hear people on um, wanting the pool to be back up and running. I just think that if we are going to be socially responsible, we also need to create a plan that if this is for true relief, we also are able to give people this service for free um, if they if they ask or if they have the need or apply for the need. Um, and I just don't think that this is something that's accessible to the community, um, which makes it a little unfair, in my opinion, to spend the money on. So um, I, of course, see a lot of people on here. So I'm going to limit my comments until I know a little bit more um, and I hear a little bit more from folks on the phone. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Christina or Vinny, do you want to go next or do you want me to talk? Whatever is Vinny, go ahead. Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you. Um, the, the first thing I want to say is that my, my hopes for the objectives of tonight were that we would establish what exactly is our charge. I say that having been on the council for a while and realizing many committees are formed and um, and you need to establish what is the objective of that committee, both its mission and its authority and or both if the case as the case may be. And then by saying that, I think we need and I've been saying this from the beginning when I was critical of what the mayor might have been doing or how this was proceeding, I was never being I was never criticizing decisions on priorities. That's down the road. I've been talking about what is our role as a council. Before we talk about anything, in my opinion, we need to determine what we both want to do and what we believe we can do. Otherwise, we're just talking about stuff. But it, none of it is is impactful. What I, this tonight cannot be a priority hearing, a discussion of the priorities about how this money should be used. But when I say that, I mean we're not there yet because we haven't decided whether or not we're going to have any impact on that. And, and so if we if we if we realize we could talk all night about the values of this, the values of that, but if we haven't determined that we are going to have an impactful effect on the decision making, what's the point? And I also think that it's dangerous to um, to allow this to potentially be defined as a process that potentially is definitive on any of those decisions because that then that takes the pressure off the other process in other words we, we with all due respect can't be talking about the pool we can talk about whether the pool should be in a part of the discussion but if we start talking about the details of whether the pool is worthwhile or not we're going to start drifting away from the general discussion of the pool and that takes the pressure off the town of whether they're going to ever fund it at all this is just a what we're talking about is can we use this money for this or that i know i'm going all over the place but i've seen this happen before and i don't want a discussion of any individual priority to be had under the impression that if it fails it's gone and that's not how it should be so let's get back to the beginning what are we here for what are we as a committee trying to establish and trying to do in my opinion and i've said it from the beginning 
we should be making a decision as to what the general priorities of the strategy of this use of these funds should be, not specific uses. We need to decide as a town, do we want to utilize this money for anything that could be considered a capital project? If we say yes or no, then that's a good thing. The mayor seemed to think we probably shouldn't. But so my point is, do we think that any of this money should be used for a capital project? And then we can talk about the, the values of that project. Do we, do we think the money should be spent only on businesses or only on individuals or only on um, public agencies? Then we, could, then we could get to the next stage of deciding who gets what. The problem is if we start talking about the, the values or the, the value of any individual spending priority, we're beyond the first step. And the administration can do what they want. That's what I've been trying to say from the beginning. They already have a plan. They already have a process. The consultant kept saying, based on your priorities, based on your guidelines, based on your criteria, what are those? I'm hoping we can establish those. And then we could talk about who or what should then be prioritized within those. Now, I certainly respect and appreciate and value any discussions tonight from any interest that might be here, because that may, may cause some of us to say, yes, I think we should definitely consider public agencies. I think we should consider capital projects. I think we should consider this, that, and the other. But until we do that, and until we decide, do we even have the authority to make this happen, we're going to be spinning our wheels. And I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in spinning my wheels. I'm interested in getting things done. So thank you. That's that's where I'm at right now. Great. Thank you. Uh, Christina, you haven't gone yet. Do you want to say anything or not yet? Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, just in, in regards to that, um, you know, I, I I agree that we should decide, you know, kind of what what direction we want this to go. Um, I know the consultant did say that, you know, we we got to hear a lot about what the administration's plan was, but um, from what I'm, my understanding is that this is this is the council's decision. Um, that seems pretty clear based on my reading of the of the act, um, based on what the law department said, based on um, what the consultant said. Um, I actually talked with the consultant after that meeting. And so it seems to me very clear that this is our decision. So, um, you know, again, maybe maybe we, maybe everybody likes the plan that was presented and that's what we go with, but I agree with Councilor Testa that we should be deciding tonight um, how we want to spend the money. Um, so that being said, um i'm i'm you know i've been trying to talk to um you know people in town and departments and some of the nonprofits and um i've been really trying this on my own in preparation for this to get a feel of what um you know kind of what people in town want and um so i i do have a list i know councilor testa didn't really want to go, want to go down there but i feel like i should at least present um, some of the ideas, but um, basically what I'm leaning towards um, capital projects and I'll, I'll explain why. Um, you know, my, my goal with this money, I think, you know, to be handed $13 million, you know, 10 of which can basically be spent um, however we want is something that we won't, you know, I don't think we, we see that often. And so I would like something that will have, um, a big impact on the town and will you know show for for years to come um it's, it's kind of a windfall and i would 
my concern with the plan that we were presented at the meeting was that we're going to spread that money so thin that it's really not going to have a major impact um, for anyone in the long run. So um, I am leaning towards capital projects. Um, you know, the pool came up. I'm, I know I was not in support of the pool initially um, a few years ago because I thought it was um, expensive at the time for, for what we were getting. It was right at the beginning of COVID. I was nervous about spending that kind of money at that point. Um, but something like the pool, I think, is would be a great use of this money because even if um, people in town who don't want to use the pool, <coughs> if we do go ahead with the pool, um, that's, you know, in effect raises everyone's taxes because the whole town needs to pay for that and it's bonded over 30 years and we have debt incurred because of that. But at this point, we can get the pool for free. So if we use this money now, whether somebody wants to use the pool or not, even if you don't ever plan on using the pool, at least you didn't have to pay for it. At least your taxes aren't going to pay for it. And for the people who do enjoy the pool and who do want it, then it's great. Now we got the pool and we didn't have to have any of these, um, you know, tough decisions about can we afford it, can we not afford it. Um, so I think the pool would be would be a great idea to spend the money on. Um, I'll go, you know, I'll go through a list of some other things that came up as I was kind of talking to people and doing some research here. Um, as far as nonprofits are concerned, I think um, the conclusion I've kind of come to in regards to that is to maybe if we give them um, a chunk of money and let them do kind of what they want with it or have very, um, just a very easy application as far as, you know, what they think the need is, um, how they think they would want to spend it. So we're not micromanaging. Um, it's less for us to do on the government side, it's less we have to pay the consultant to do. And they, again, like has been said before, they know where those needs are so they can address them. So, you know, let's say we decide to do some block grants and we have, you know, six organizations maybe apply and we just give them each a chunk of money and we let them decide how they want to spend it. Um, so that's, that's what I'm thinking in regards to the nonprofits. Um, a splash pad has come up. Some people have mentioned two splash pads, maybe one on either side of town. I know if we do the pool project, there could be one included there. Um, but I think that's a, you know, in relation to this whole chunk of money, fairly low cost and has a big impact. I know a lot of people have been clamoring for, for that. Um, somebody brought up a skate park. Um, some improvements to the Tyler Mill trails has been, have been brought up. I know that uh, there's some people who will volunteer, but maybe need some funding to, to get some things done in there, like bridges. Um, so again, th these things kind of all would go to, through Parks and Rec, and obviously, you know, we could bring them into that. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, these I think I brought up at our last meeting, but somebody had mentioned that there were some um, traffic light issues that they wanted fixed. Um, and then some, a, a couple of people brought up um, the businesses in the downtown, possible Wi-Fi, um, possible things to do to encourage um, those downtown businesses. I know the outdoor eating was something that we started during the pandemic and kind of became very popular. So maybe some um, enhancements to that or um, some sprucing up. I know the facade program was brought up. So um, again, those are just some of the things that um, I've heard, some of the ideas, but I agree with Councilor Testa that you know, we should decide how we want to spend it. Um, and again, from my understanding and everything um, I've read and um, been told, I'm, I'm confident that this is our decision, the council decision on how to spend this. And certainly um, the administration's idea can come into play, but I think we should, we are the ones that need to decide where we want this to go at this point. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilor Tatum. Um, so I'll I'll go next, and then we'll see if there's a conversation before hearing from the public. Um, I agree with um, little bits of what everybody said, but Councillor Testa, that I think we need to start with the bigger picture, larger. What are we doing here? Um, I do think the decision is with us. Um, I think that became clear, more so clear in the last meeting. I have no objection to how we got to where we are now. Um, my, but it, clearly now it's it's on us. I, I think, um, in my preference, uh, my my priorities are are not capital projects. Uh, the pool is an example. I do want the pool to support the pool, but I think we can pay for the pool just normally, um, as we would and should. 
the I think the priority should be the uh, businesses, uh, the nonprofits, and then some sort of discussion on on individuals. Um, I know individual situations are tough to judge. Um, is, is it possible that the nonprofits already taken care of or can continue to take care of individuals? Um, that's all kind of stuff that I'm thinking about. I cannot turn uh, turn a blind eye or my back on some of the businesses businesses that have spoken to me um, even last night uh, looking for some sort of you know they're they're they made it they squeaked by um, but they're they're clamoring you know they they're clawing at the at the walls and and this could uh, they are kind of hoping for it they're counting on it uh, because the discussion around most of the country is that that's what this is for um, I guess they're, they know it's hard. Uh, they're just looking to have an edge taken off. Um, I spoke in the very beginning about nonprofit involvement, uh, and I see that uh, in two ways. One, uh, receiving funds, but also administering or assisting and in, in administering funds. These organizations have already been working with all these people during all this time and giving away money that they have been able to scrounge up. Um, I think that if we can help them either to give them money for programs or projects or distribution, but also then ask them like, who, who needs this money? Um, you know, maybe, maybe the nonprofits are better to handle the individual experience and the town focus on, on businesses and nonprofits. I don't know. Um, if, if we got to the point where people, you know, we, we were, we received requests and there was money left over. I don't think there would be. Um, then maybe then throw it towards some sort of capital project. But I think something, especially like the pool, we we have that. We have the bond rating. We have money. Um, we could do the pool. Uh, I wanted the pool like that situation before. Go out to bid again and um, and do that. So I think those those are my priorities. That's my strategy uh, to go forward with it. I would recommend. I would ask the council, the, the subcommittee, if we wanted to recommend going to the full council to start with what the consultant has already done um, and ask for a, like a, not on a PowerPoint, but like on paper, like what are the questions are going to be on the survey? And then we go through and like, well, we want the, this, this amount of years to be this instead, this dollar amount to be this dollar amount, um, or we don't want these five questions, we want these five instead. Um, I really feel like we need some sort of opportunity for the public to to tell us what they need in a formal way. Um, so that's where I am on it. Um, Autumn, I see you raising your hand. I just wanted to um, partner with you on that idea. Um, since we had limitations, um, Mr. Reagan, did say he was ready to give us a presentation of what it would actually look like since we had limitations um, within the council it could be an opportunity to see if one of the consultants or one of the um, people that he's working with or that work for him could actually just take us through what it looks like and then we can live see on the screen as well as record um, what that looks like to the public and give our feedback with some immediacy. Obviously having paper questions is, is also great, but can you go on mute? Thank yeah. you. Um, so essentially like being taken through it so that we can actually see what it looks like um, and then also give our feedback with some immediacy could be the possibility. I do agree that we need to come up with our charge and we need to come up with how the survey is going to be passed out. Um, and I think that those are the first two questions that we, uh, not survey, but the application. I think those are the first two questions that we um, answer here. But I also do want to go back and say um, my statements about the particular projects were more in reference to my desire to make sure that this is socially responsible. Um, so, uh, you know, 
that's that's basically just my um, rebuttal there. Um, so I'm done. Thanks. And you, uh, Christina, Councillor Tata. <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, I I do not. I don't want to. I don't even want to go for go back to what we went over with that. That was that was an application process. Was what they created. Um, and an application is not a survey. So um, what the consultant created was an application process that was created with the administration and with the law department and with um, economic development. So that's not an information gathering, that's an application to get money. So once once people apply to get money, um, that's not a survey, that's, they think they're getting money. They, that's a program to provide them funds. Um, so I, I have zero interest in going back to that, um, at least at this point. I, you know, and I also, I, my concern with, um, with either that application or with, um, you know, even a survey of sorts is that, you know, Council Allison was talking about, you know, making sure everyone is accessible to everybody, but, you know, how about, you know, how about we have non-English speaking, um, you know, residents in town or business owners in town, and we have, you know, people who maybe aren't um, aware of different offerings and how are we going to make, how are we going to make sure everybody is aware of the survey? So it, basically what I'm trying to say, let's say the application, you know, because EDC was involved in this application already, we're, I'm sure business, certain businesses already know that this is kind of in the works and are, you know, ready for it and probably gearing up to, but what about the people who don't know? So I'm not sure that the town is going to be able to let everybody who needs to know about this to know about it. And then, you know, I would hate for this, you know, either survey or application to go out and then people say, well, I didn't know about this. And how come the guy next door, you know, got $5,000 and I didn't get anything. And so, again, I'm just going to go back to instead of um, instead of us doing this, I think, you know, groups like United Way or, you know, they're they know how to reach those people. Um, you know, EDC certainly knows how to read businesses, but um, just a town-wide survey. I, I'm just afraid we're gonna we're gonna miss a lot of people um, doing it that way. Thanks. All right. Um, same as I don't know if I use the word survey or autumn. That I I meant application. I'm I, I'm good with the application. Yeah, that they would apply, they would get money. That's that's where I was. I didn't mean it as a survey. Um, I also corrected myself. Thank you. I don't know. I just wanted to be, because I, because I, I may have said that, like surveying or find out what people want. So I just wanted to share what I said. Um, okay. Anybody else? Um, we have Mr. Ryan that is also, Vinny, did you want to go before Tim Ryan or? Uh, just one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I'll try to make one point. Um, I go back. I, I go back to the the, <clears throat> the what I've said it, about what our original charge should be, and that is not so much to entertain any individual, the merits of any individual uh, spending plan, but to decide how do we want to distribute this money philosophically, and then say okay we have 13 million dollars so this is for example let's just say we want to uh we want to allocate 20 percent of that to community-wide projects that might benefit everybody we want to allocate 20 percent to businesses that have can can demonstrate um you know a need based on a loss uh, and, and so on and so forth, and 20% to, you know, um, so forth and so on. Because the way it is right now, it really is, a, it's set up right now as a, a subsidy application program. In other words, it's been presented that everybody that might be eligible for this is going to be subsidized 
for loss and or slash damage. So, and if that is what our priority is, that's fine. But we haven't established that. And if we just put it out for applications, every application is going to be a request for subsidy. You might have who's going to who's going to put an application in to build a skate park. I'm just throwing it out there. In other words, that's our job. Our job is to say we want to take X percent and allocate it to community investment, and then we go all into that realm of looking at what's available and deciding whether we want to invest in it, so on and so forth. I just think we again. We need to decide what our priorities are as to the use of this money. And then we can talk about individual applications. I've said it multiple times, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Sure. Uh, Councilor Tessa, what, how do you feel, then who do you see administering over the rest of the process after we determine strategy and priorities? Is it something we continue to keep in your mind? Or is it something that you want the administration? Yes, honestly, oh, I have all sorts of ideas I'd love to throw on the table, but I was, I, I, I want to really get there. But if, for you example, mentioned that. I just wanted to hear, yeah. For, for example, very simple. If we say 20% is for community investments, that's us. We address those. We establish those priorities. Could take us a year to do it. Who knows how long it's going to take? We say 20% is going to be for business subsidy reinforcement. We allocate that to the, con the consultant and the EDC. We say, um, um, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank, I'm sorry. Public agencies. We say, okay, let's, let's establish that 20% is going to go to reimbursing all of the, um, the United Way and SCOW and all, and we give it to them. I, I, I forget either Christina or, or um, Autumn said it allocated to let them make the decisions. I'm all of, I'm all for that because I agree that the people closest to the need should make the decision as to the distribution of that. But we are way back here saying, okay, this chunk goes to that need. Now let's let the people closest to the need determine where it goes. That's not a real difficult thing to do. It takes a little work, but we could do it because we have so many amazing people involved in all of these areas. But to try to decide, say, we are going to make all those decisions, that's just absolutely nonsense. We can't do that. And then it gets us in over our head. You know what I mean? And then, so, no. So what I'm saying is, Let's make the big board decisions, percentage decisions, and then allocate, and then decide who's going to do all that. And you know what? It's going to flow like you can't imagine. Because as I said, there are amazing people involved in all of this. All they're doing is they're just sitting there going, oh, please let me be involved. Please let me be involved. I see their pictures. I see them all. I see the people from the business community. I see Maria. I see everybody saying, I just want to have a say in this because, because I know I know what needs to be done. And I'm saying, I agree. I'm with you. I don't want to make that decision, but I have to make the first one. I have to make the first decision. And that's how much of the pie do you get? And then once I make that decision, I'm pretty cool sitting back and letting it all happen. That's where I want to see it done, how I want to see it done. Thanks. Excellent clarification. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, would you like to make your comments? Thank you very much, Mr. Laff. I appreciate it. Um, now I'm going to ask you to indulge me as I go back to the outset of the ARPA program. Uh, we've seen this metamorphosize so much since it was first introduced. Um, it was introduced as a, um, a program, a relief program for small business, non-for-profits, households, 
and then with some limited community project uh, involvement. Uh, it started very with a very narrow focus, and this thing is broadened. Every single time you pick up another white paper on the subject, it broadens. And my concern is that the, um, the original intent of this money is beginning to get you know, grade by, um, by municipal projects. I've seen it in community after community. I am obviously your advocate for the business community. And I'm here to tell you that I have spoken to the WCI, the Downtown Business Group, the Wallingford Rotary Club. I've spoken to many businesses in this town who have been negatively impacted by the COVID crisis and who are anticipating relief from this program. And we have worked diligently um, with, the, uh, with the consultant, with the mayor, with the other team in town hall to put together an application that basically identifies whether a business has been negatively impacted. We are looking for a net effect. We certainly don't want anybody taking advantage of this funding program. Um, so I, I, I ask that you please prioritize. As has been mentioned by several counselors, it's important to prioritize, but I ask that you do it like this. You know, we is in the administration have said, we feel strongly that businesses, small business. Now it took us a while to define small business. We're not looking for anybody who is publicly, any publicly traded businesses. I mean, take a look at the hospitality industry. You know, we, we, they have been decimated, but we do not anticipate, nor would we, are we willing to accept applications from, you know, nationally branded hotels that have been crushed in this town. That's not a good use of this money, in our opinion. So we've identified small businesses, those of 25 employees or less. All right, we, we've, we, by virtue of definition, eliminated many of the chain fast food restaurants because they're publicly traded. And when you buy stock in a company, you buy stock and you, you, you take risk. That's the business model for those companies. We are looking for, for the most part, sole proprietorships, small businesses, partnerships, 25 you know, employees or less that have been impacted. Now I will tell you, there are scores of them. Just take a ride up North, North, Barnes, uh, North Plains Industrial Road. When we talk about small business, we have an inclination to think about um, Center Street. And there's no doubt we are gonna have a lot of applications from businesses on Center Street. But we have so many small manufacturing businesses that are the heart blood of our economy that have been crushed now, that said, there are some businesses, by virtue of what COVID is, is, uh, is dictated, that have flourished. But we're here to help those that have not. So <clears throat> the priorities that we feel very strongly about is, let's take this step by step. First step, small business, non-for-profit, and households. So youth and social services can manage the household side. The non-for-profit side will take care of itself. They understand who is in need and how to manage that. And the EDC will manage the small business side with your guidance and of course your final approval. No, no one is looking to, to do this outside of the council. We need to team up and do it together because at the end of the day, we want, to, we want this money to be used how it was intended. And it was intended to relieve these businesses. That said, we can also, and I've had several individual conversations with some businesses in the town center, I won't publicly name them, but I think if you, you can deduce who I'm talking about, where they have been impacted in such a way, loss of rents, um, uh, and we can earmark money. It's, it's, within the, it's within the parameters of the program to earmark the money. For example, a small business comes to us, they make their plea, they prove out through their financials that they've been negatively impacted. We net it against any other have they received PPP money, restaurant relief money, IEDL IE, loan money, et cetera. We net it against all of those, those other mechanisms to make sure that we are not being taken advantage of. And then we can say, all right, we're gonna give you X amount of dollars, but we want you to do this with it. We want you to improve your, your building facade. We want you to make building improvements. We want you to improve the look of your facility in downtown, all right? And that goes beyond downtown. So. Um, I appreciate the time, but and I, I appreciate the fact that priority has been mentioned any number of times. I, I totally support priority. 
but I think the three priorities and how I see it is again small business non for profits and and households and if there's money left over then let's go back in a second round and say okay what community projects would we like to fund but I think if any business in town is does not really you uh, get the relief any non for profit any any folks that have been negatively impacted by the COVID crisis, that is the intent of the money. If they do not get the relief that we, this money is saying they're entitled to, all right, and I don't dispute that, if they don't get it because we've done some other capital project in the community, I, I think I, I would be very disappointed. It's not who Wallingford is, all right? So I, I, I just implore you to allow us to work with you to utilize the money as it is intended. And we can bring great relief to a lot of businesses. One of the things that we insisted on being in the application was, A, you are still in business, and this on the business application, of course, and B, that this money will sustain the continuation of your business. We don't want anybody to grab it and close the door. All right, so now, obviously, there's, you know, they have to attest uh, that the information they give us is accurate and so forth. We need to protect ourselves at the same time. So. I, I just ask that you consider uh, rolling it out that way. Prioritize, as Councillor Testa, Councillor Laffin have, have stressed, um, but let's do it in a couple of tranches. Let's make the first tranche those three categories, small business, not-for-profit, household, and then with, with money left over, let's address it won't be what any else money. we have. Thank you. There we go. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. All right. Um, if we want to have other people go ahead and speak, let me know in the chat within the GoTo. Uh, I will then go to the phones of anybody that might be on the phones to hear what you have to say. Um, I know there are nonprofits here. If the nonprofits could address whether what they hypothetically would use the money for maybe to help us not to narrow not for priorities but to narrow down um a comment that well that i made earlier i'm at anyway as a counselor i'm asking could the nonprofits handle a distribution and i think counselor tested it as well a distribution to the households to the individuals in in a way that is more meaningful than what the town could be responsible for um maybe that looks like businesses get a certain pool nonprofits for programming Get a certain pool, and then a there is a pool for household distribution that might be completed or assisted heavily or run by some of the key nonprofits in town. Uh, Mr. Jason Michael, you are first. Thank you, and uh, thank thank you to all of you guys for taking this on. It's it's a pretty big mountain to climb, <clears throat> I'd imagine. But I, I, I just want to make a few comments as I think I sit in a, a, a pretty unique position um, as I, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm, I'm well entrenched into the Parks and Rec as sitting chairman of the commission. And I also, I um, for the uh, sorry, I forgot that part. Oh, sorry, uh, 81 right. Meadow, um, 81 you. Meadow, yep. Uh, and I'm also a, a, an owner of three businesses in town, all of, of whom were uh, affected by by covid we you know I, i'd like to think that we were pretty responsible before covid came and, and were able to weather the storm um i i have a couple of questions uh that i'll i'll save for the end that would address the the categorization and and money left over comments that were made before but i think it, it's 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 wise to keep in mind that on the capital project side be it downtown revitalization uh community pools or an amphitheater whatever you, you you see it being i think it's a that can also be viewed as a as a as a contribution to everyone because everyone was affected by covid i mean let, let's let's be honest there I, I can't imagine many who weren't whether it be financially or how, whatever however it shook out but if, if if we add an amenity to town or improve something in town we've improved the value of our town and that and that contributes to everyone's quality of life in town 
so I think I think that has to be viewed as well. There's a component of these of these capital improvements that do affect everyone, directly, indirectly. Um, if 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 we make downtown Wallingford that much better with some of this money, well, now we've improved the value of of, of that portion of town. And 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 do we draw people in or keep people here rather than moving somewhere else that that has a grand strip or whatever i mean i don't want to go too far down the line there but i think it should be kept kept at the forefront that capital projects benefit everyone on a certain level as far as as improving the value of our town in general um and i, I do have a question about um up about the 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 percentage of a split that was being talked about wouldn't you need to know the amount of people or businesses looking for a portion of that money before you can assign a percentage as to where it goes. Because I kept hearing with the money that's left over, the money that's left over, well, how do we know how many thousands of people or hundreds or thousands of businesses that are going to apply? And I don't know how you could make an educated decision as to the percentage of the money that would go private, 501c3, or capital improvements until you know what those are. And if I'm, if I'm getting ahead of you guys and you already have a plan for that, then I apologize. But it struck me that we would start to, and, and I know, and I, I compliment Councillor Testa on keeping this on the, the train tracks of what you're here to build and do rather than slicing this thing up into little pieces, deciding who gets what and where. There, there are going to be plenty of hands reaching into a, a cookie jar that's going to look smaller and smaller, I imagine, by the end of this thing. So um, I, I just didn't know how that would work without knowing how many applicants you're going to have. Because if you only have a handful of 51C3s, but you've dedicated 20% of this money, this is all conjecture, but how does that make any sense to, to say, okay, we're gonna do 15% to 51C3s, and then you you have even or, either an exorbitant amount of them, or you don't have a lot of them. So without knowing who's going to line up for this relief, I think it becomes a, a tall task to, to start dividing it up into into percentages, but um, I think uh, I think well I, I think that's 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 good for now. I'm not going to go too long, but uh, I think that that ha I think will have to be in focus before a decision as to how much goes where. But um, thank you. No, thank you, and yeah, I agree with you. Uh, that's why I, I think the application process touchpad. Uh, the application process is is probably the way place to start, and then we can determine how much we really can allocate going forward. Um, does anybody else want to comment from the public, Ms. Harlow? I hope that you don't hear my daughter there singing like crazy downstairs. I apologize for that. So um, I think that I feel. That we're getting somewhere and that's that's very encouraging um i i want us to to keep in mind a couple of things tim ryan was hit it on the nail he was absolutely uh, on point with all of this i think that we really need to keep in mind what is the purpose of this money this is not really free money we're going to be paying for this for the rest of our lives probably we need to make sure that we are investing this in the best possible way to help our community thrive. So this is, I know that it's difficult to determine how much money we're going to put in each pot, but we do need to be strategic about what we are doing. These are, these are serious investments. This is just not throwing a few monies here for this one and, 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 and a little money here. This is, has, we need a strategic approach because we are going to help lift our community. And that goes into supporting our businesses, supporting our individuals, supporting nonprofits. Um, I think that you, the town council is the body, as a body, is the ultimate, ultimate body responsible to approve whatever we decide here. Um, I would appreciate if, if, it's, um, if you see, if, any of a good value the opportunity for our nonprofits to sit down with the committee with the five of you to discuss a little more about the need 
and about the process how this um, initiative uh, can go by. I would like to to really have that opportunity. Sure. And the the challenge with sitting now with the five of us is it would have to be it would this is it it would have to be a full blown public meeting in order to have uh, because we were decided committee. Um, I don't even know how. I mean, if we broke up in groups, maybe if you're looking for more of a conversation versus a meeting for the five of us to sit together and talk about this, now we have to do it. I would like to. It's it's a, again because I we do. I do feel that we have to be very strategic on what we're doing. It's not about throwing money to each pot just because there is there is a rational behind, there is a need behind. It's very difficult to know what the need is going to be right off the bat. We need to have this discussion. Um, I do agree that definitely our priorities have to go before businesses and profits, individuals, and then at the end we can focus on uh, municipal work. Not everybody, uh, again, the, the spirit of this money is to help those who have been economically impacted by the pandemic. And not everybody was economically impacted by the pandemic and we cannot lose sight of that. There are a lot of things that me as a Wally for resident I would like to see in my town that will make, make me very happy, but it will be very, make me much happier to know that people are thriving and that we're supporting our tax base and that our neighbors and everybody can support our local businesses and that we have a healthy community. So along those lines, I would like the opportunity, I will work on the opportunity to sit down with you and discuss the details of how nonprofits will be able to contribute to this process. Okay. And I will, I welcome an open meeting, that's fine. And uh, Maria, do you see that as more um, outside or before the application process, if we went to applications for the, your nonprofit to submit or as something that happens before? I think that it can be helpful when we're thinking about how we are going to allocate the monies in each one of the, of the areas. Um, so for allocation purposes, you think yes. it's so similar to application, whether we do an application or we go direct to allocation percentages. Yeah. The, the application that was presented by um, Regan needed some improvement when it comes oh, yeah. to, to yeah, yeah, nonprofits yeah. applying for projects. Yeah. It, it requires more more detail. So those discussions that we can have to focus only on the on the nonprofit part, um, I will be happy if we have that opportunity. Great. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Ryan, you were next. You've already spoken. Other people want to speak too. Do you want to defer for now or is, do you want to fit it in now while it is prevalent to you jumping into wanting to say something? I'll, de I'll defer to be polite. Oh, all right. Well, thank you. Uh, and Ms. Davis, I see your comments too. I've got a list going. Can I, I'll add you to the list. Uh, so next we're going to go with Debbie or G. I'm guessing that Ms. Rose. That's correct. Yay. Yeah. Good evening, Debbie Gross, 114 Long Hill Road. Regarding the application process, um, can you elaborate a little bit more on it? Because I'm thinking that the, the more processes you have, the longer it's going to take to get the money to those who need it. We've already wasted a year when a year ago is really when the businesses and a lot of people really, really needed the money. Um, so if we, if we put an application process together, um, again, you can get thousands of applications and you're going to have to sift through them. them. Um, the amount of money that we're receiving is a small amount of money and it's going to um, deplete very quickly. So I, I guess I go back to what's the best, the quickest and the fastest way and how can we impact our whole community and the fact that um, we want to give some heat to businesses, not for profits. I, I, I get some of that. I get I get the not for profits, the you know the United Ways, the food banks, and the places like that where it really affects people that in need um, because they you know they're 
the need of the population who normally goes to uh, receives benefits from a food banker and such um, that population has grown significantly and the middle class is has definitely um, dipped into that more so than ever and so like I said it's growing so that's where in my mind that a, a lot of the money or a good portion of the money needs to go as well as um, Everyone, and somebody said it, everyone in the town has been impacted by it in some way, shape, or form. Um, so the fact that um, large or capital projects, and I'm going to use community pool, and, 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 I'm, and, and I know that's an easy one, um, but it's not necessarily community pool. Maybe it's partly community pool. Maybe it's some other projects that affect the whole town as a community and affects our taxes right it reduces our taxes so everybody gets impacted by that and not just um a, a business or small business or whatever um like i said that that pool is going to diminish very quickly and i just think that the council maybe should before you take comments from the public maybe discuss among yourselves what your thoughts are and based on what we all said because i mean we can all go back and forth and say what we really would like to see so i guess i would like maybe the council to kind of think about it um and then talk among themselves and then maybe take more questions from the public thank you great thank you uh, mr seminelli yeah, I, I just wanted to say, first of all, this is a great discussion, and I think there's a lot of good ideas out there. I do want to, as the chairman of the pool committee on the Park and Rec, as you know, this project, as of this September, will be a six-year anniversary of getting nothing done. Uh, it will be our second, our third summer without a pool. Um, the plug was pulled on this project by a veto by the mayor uh, because of COVID. So this capital project has been affected because of COVID. And I think and what I'm trying to understand here is that some of this money should be used for things that were affected by COVID and the pool was. And we've sat through many meetings. Um, we've been canceled with meetings with the mayor. You know, I mean, again, um, it, it's gotten to a point of being ridiculous. And if anybody really believes that we're going to get the money from somewhere else besides this uh, uh, program, I think they're sadly mistaken because I don't see the mayor making any changes in his position on the pool. Uh, it is my belief that uh, we won't see a pool. And I think after six years of, of, of hard work on my part, my committee's part, all of us on Park and Rec, and I think it's a sad state of affairs. So I would just ask some consideration for some of the money to be used so we maybe can get this project moved along and it will help the entire community and be an investment in our town. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Savinelli. Ms. Davis. Okay, so a few comments I have is to uh, Mr. Michael. He had a question on how are we going to um, make it more reasonable, especially on for an application process for a small business. And, you know, the EDC had defined a small business, I think Tim Ryan said, as one to 25 people. Um, the actual final rule act was up to 500 employees. So some of the council at the last meeting had said that we should expand that and put it into uh, having businesses up to 500 employees apply for this money. So to answer your question, I believe what the EDC is going to do in reference to the business is once we have those parameters set, so it's 1 to 25, 1 to 100, whatever that is, that will reduce the application process, I believe. Um, the other thing is, is um, and I did not identify myself. My, Liz Davis, uh, 31 Odette Drive. I happen to be the executive director of Wallingford Center, Inc. that deals with most all businesses within the historic downtown. So let me just put it that way. Um, so that being the case, we're, I think we're, those parameters are going to weed out some of the larger uh, applicants. Um, 
So I think that's a key. The other thing is some of the uh, businesses downtown um, won't apply because they've gotten through COVID. They don't think they should they should um, um, apply for the the funds and would like other businesses that they feel would need uh, the money to to you know apply and let them go first, so to speak. Um, I happen to favor a lot of the different things, like Maria was saying, where you know if you sit and you are out, you're sitting there and, and making the application, and Maria has some of her ideas as far as how to address the application questions. I think that's a great way to handle it, and then she can see, you know, she gets to know where that money is could be better spent. The same thing with the youth and social services, the residents. Um, they see it every day with uh, the town and what's happening. So you need to sit and have a conversation with them as well, just like you would have a conversation with Tim Ryan on some of the businesses and, you know, the same um, questions can be put in front of me as well. Um, so I, I, I agree with all of that um, because it is a good way to process um, the way people are going to apply. Um, it might help everybody else understand what the different needs are as well. Um, I'm all for capital projects. Um, I think that's great. Um, as a resident, I think it's a great idea. Um, I just would want to make sure that the businesses and or residents of this town that are in need get addressed um, because Quite frankly, if we don't address that need, then there's not going to be people to be able to go to the town pool <laughs> because they don't have the funds to do it or be able to do whatever unless it's going to be free. Um, so those are my couple of comments. I'm not sure that I've answered your questions, Mr. Michael, but hopefully that broadens the, uh, the answers to what you might have had. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ms. Davis. Uh, we're going to go to Richard Crumble, and I apologize. I uh, was handwriting a list based on the chat, and I skipped over your name earlier. No, that's okay. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. All right. Um, I just going to be very brief. I, I just want to thank all of you for taking this on. Um, you know, the spotlight's on, that's for sure. Um, I want to echo some of what I heard and then add a few comments. Um, I think it's important that, that you as a committee um, understand exactly what your charge is, uh, what you're able to do, what you're not able to do um, as part of this process. Um, I think there is um, a lot of need out there. Um, as people have said, I think everybody to a lesser or more extent um, has been impacted um, by COVID. Um, and I think that it would be good to have some sort of mechanism um, where people at large, I don't even know how many people are aware of the work that you're doing tonight um, or you know whether they could contact their council person or a council person to make suggestions um, that they might have that would benefit either um, you know individual entities or people or the town at large. Um, I don't know if perhaps there could be a website established, Jason, um, that you know people could put their ideas into um, and and let everyone see you know what people feel where there's a need, and then from that, um, you know, as was suggested, create some some broad parameters, some buckets, you know, where the money is being allocated, so it is spread you know, across those needs, you know, for example, the nonprofits um, to businesses, um, perhaps to capital projects. In other words, maybe one area is impacted greater than another, but I think all of the buckets should have some allocation. Um, I know people have thrown out community pool, but for example, downtown Wi-Fi or fixing some infrastructure in town that maybe um, to date the mayor has not elevated um, you know high enough to, to get some funding um, those kind of things um, but 
uh, again, thank you very much for for taking this on. Um, I appreciate um, what all you know you're doing. And uh, um, oh, finally, I, I would say just make sure that in the end, it's all documented, 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 so that you know people can go back and look and say, you know, if United Way received this amount of money, or or you know, if small businesses received this amount of money, it's just where all that went. So there's no. It's all above board. Nobody can say, you know, that there was there was something nefarious um, that occurred, you know, where this was done as a favor to somebody, whatever. Um, but again, thank you again for all of your involvement. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, good evening. And again, I thank you all for taking the time. Um, first of all, I'd like to echo what uh, Tim had said. Uh, the businesses, the nonprofits, and the individuals uh, we're hurting. Uh, a survey at this point, I think, would be senseless and a waste of everybody's time. If we as leaders of the community don't understand the need that's out there, and maybe some of us are in the wrong positions, uh, the small business, uh, focusing on the small business, it, it's obvious why that's a need, not only for the owner, but for the employee, for the uh, rental houses that they pay rent on, the gas station that they're buying their gas at. I mean, there's a trickle down offense, uh, effect when you address the small businesses. Uh, a lot of them are not on this webcam tonight because they're out trying to make some money to stay afloat. So, you know, we can't take the small business lightly. Uh, as for the community pool uh, being affected by the uh, COVID, if that is the case, when we're done with these other uh, necessary pro uh, priorities, I think that should be number one on, on the town's list. Frankly, I missed the pool. I haven't been there in many years, but my family used it a lot. And with the growing number of young families moving into town, I think that is a resource for the town. But again, I think we first got to make sure that our businesses stay open, that their employees stay employed, and that the small business supporting those businesses have the funds to stay employed. So, I mean, it's obvious we got to address this. Uh, I just think we've started a process, you know, maybe you could expand on it, maybe you could tweak it, but to put a survey out, if I was a councilman and we put a survey, I would be insulted, I would be embarrassed. You mean you can't open your eyes and look around town and see what needs to be done? What needs to be done is leaders got to lead. And somewhere along the line, we have to make a decision, as hard as it is, that here's the priorities. As Vinny has tried to test and said, we got to set the priorities. I think Tim has explained it very well, and hopefully we can uh, follow suit. I thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Mara. Miss Adriana Rodriguez. Hello, everyone. Good um, evening. So I did want to share, so first off, um, Adriana Rodriguez, 18 Leighton Avenue, and I'm also the executive director of this Spanish community of Wallingford. If we come together collectively, we can continue the already the ongoing efforts that are happening in Wallingford. There are many nonprofit organizations that have the expertise, bilingual staff, and experience with emergency situations such as COVID. The nonprofits provide the direct services already and advocacy and cross collaboration. I really feel that we do better when we work together and everything that we do is with purpose. So at SCOW, our mission is to respond to the needs of the community by assisting. So we can share our, pro our process of how we have dealt with the pandemic. We have distributed fin partial financial assistance with rents, utilities, medical, and so on but just not only to the Hispanic community, but to everyone who has walked through our doors and in need. So to share, we have successfully coordinated 27 vaccination clinics, food drives, dis distributions of COVID test kits, and PP to over 2,200 people. All together with Youth and Social Services, United Way, Masters Mana, Boys and Girls Club, the Wallingford Center Inc., YMCA, Hubcap, the Wallingford Public Schools, Wallingford, Wallingford Public Library, and many more. And again, not just to the Hispanic community, to everyone in need. At each event that we have hosted, we provide wraparound services to connect individuals with the community resources that are in place in English and in Spanish. 
I am more than glad to share what we have learned over the past couple of years and what the community is saying. So at every event, we really try to just ask, check in, and find solutions. So if I can be of assistance, I definitely would like to share what we have done together. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the work Scout has done uh, from the clinics and everything throughout the whole, whole pandemic. Mr. Gross, you will be the last comment before we go back to Mr. Ryan and Councillor Zandry. Good afternoon, um, Bob Gross, Long Hill Road. Um, I have to agree with uh, Mr. Michael, Ms. Ms. Tata, and so forth, M Mr. Savinelli, of course. Um, I think if you're gonna go the route you're gonna go, you're gonna spend a ton of money on the consultant. The applications are gonna come in, somebody's gotta go through them. These are approximately $148 an hour. Um, you're gonna spend tens of thousands, if not $100,000 or more on a consultant because this is a multi-year project. Uh, the mayor has already stated that, they're, that the county department's not gonna do it, that it's going to be the consultant that's gonna go through all the paperwork. This is why it's very important that groups such as United Way, Masters Mana, whether it's even if you don't want even United Way because you're too close in ties, have the New Haven Foundation take the money and then disperse it to United Way. Um, and then they can disperse it from there to keep a bookkeeping. These groups are able to step in and take care of the needs of the people of Wallingford. Individuals to come in for, to come in for, uh, to do applications for individuals is gonna be very difficult. The, the groups such as United Way and those groups know who, where the needs are and they can get the word out. They're the ones that are going to reach right out to the needs of the community, I would think, and Ms. Harlow could correct me if I'm wrong, but that's, those are the people that uh, would be able to do it. And why? And so to Mr. Testa's point, which is right, I mean, you, you got to figure out how you're going to spend the money. If you were to say to the um, 501Cs right off the bat, and the council has this pur purview now, give them, don't give them, but have them request a million dollars to put out there to start their seed money for what they need to do. They'll document how they spend the money. Put some money away for next year because you don't have to spend it all at once. You don't have to allocate it all now. And as the year goes on, if they need more money, the need is out there is greater than they feel, then they can come back for another half million, million dollars, whatever they need to do to do their thing. But to but the rest of the money really should help the community at large. Whether it's Wi-Fi in downtown, there should be some money for lower downtown. Um, you can do small grants to facade improvements and those types of things that beautify the town, make it better. But uh, we have parks that are in disarray. Um, nobody needs to go over the list. Everybody knows what the town overall looks like. It needs a lot of work. Town halls and in, in mass, um, you know, it's it, just, you know, in town hall, if we were to have another pandemic, and, and it's worse than this, if, and who knows, nobody knows, town hall is not set up to, to take care of the needs of the citizens of Wallingford, to go into that building. How do I send my 85-year-old mother into town hall when there's a pandemic, when nobody's wearing a mask? They should be able to go in there and be safe. And the idea is they should be able to do everything online and the town isn't set up for it. Take some money, make make the town, and this is, I know, weird, make them go into the 21st century. You're talking, Mr. Ryan and so forth, they're talking about, you know, businesses, and I agree, but we should, the town hall should be in the 21st century. And these are things, oh, oh, they forgot. When this was set up originally a year ago, a little over a year ago when it passed, municipal projects were included. If I'm, I'm going from memory now, but it was projects that would help, outdoor projects that would help the community as a whole so they wouldn't be inside. So parks, community pools, I remember talking about community pool a year ago, or not a year ago, but close to it. These types of things, because they were in the first tranche of what was out there. And I think it was Mr. Ryan that said, or Mr. Mayor, I don't remember which, I think Mr. Ryan, saying that other towns are doing it, well, you know, they're doing big projects. Most other towns are doing big projects. They are, because that benefits the most people in the town.
but they are also helping out they're less less fortunate, and that's through the 501Cs. That's through your Masters, Man United Way, Food Bank, etc. And they they should not be forgotten. And, and, and honestly, it'd be a sin if they weren't helped within 30 to 60 days to get the money to them now. Even if it's half million dollars, get something to them. You know, you're already paying the consultant. You're sending money his way. And I'm nothing against the consultant, but I'm saying these are the people. You're, you keep talking about people in need. These are the people that are in need. Get them their money now. And then you can go on from there. And I know this is going to be discussed on forever, but thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Mr. Gross. That will end the public comment portion, Mr. Ryan, and then we'll go to Mr. Sandry. Very good. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Lappin. So uh, I did just want to caution everyone when we're making comparisons to how other communities are spending the money, you know, devil's in the details, um, our, you know, our, our Town to the north, for example, has got um, almost three times the amount of money that we have, but they've got a smaller business base than we do. Now, that, that speaks volumes to how strong Wallingford is. And I mean, let's just say nothing detrimental about our neighbor to the north, but it's all relative. So for them to be taking and earmarking community-related projects, you know, linear trail expansions, et cetera, early in the process is very, very different than us doing the same thing. Um, and so I just want to make that point. Let's make sure that we're comparing apples and apples. There, there are some shoreline communities, Westport being one that's investing in, you know, jetty expansions, boardwalk expansions, but it's Westport. They're getting more money than we are. All right. But it's Westport. And, and the, the same level of business detriment there is not the same level of this in our community. So we have to be cognizant that as we look at the distribution of these funds along other communities, it's not an apples to apples comparison based on some other metrics. Um, it was mentioned before uh, by someone that, um, you know, how do we notify everybody? All right, we, we have had conversations as we were building this process and said to ourselves, if any business that is entitled to some relief does not know about the program, shame on us. So we have to endeavor to make sure that everybody does know. Now, we have a unique ability to put notifications in electric bills in this town. And everybody gets one. So, you know, we, we've got other mechanisms set up where we, we will take and, and uh, make sure that notifications are out. Websites, we'll do public speaking engagements, we'll do, do, uh, talk with business groups, et cetera. Um, but uh, the notifications in electric bills is, it's a, it's a slam dunk, right? So I just wanted to address that as a one-off. And it, and it the, um, at the risk of, you know, repeating and overstating my position, you know, this is an unprecedented time in our lifetime, in, in the world. Government shut businesses down. Not an editorial comment. It's a fact. They shut businesses down. Necessarily so. Or they limited business activities. Necessarily so. Government is now saying, we're going to try to make these businesses whole by providing this funding. So I think we've got to stick to that and recognize that that's what that funding was intended was aimed to do. Um, I've heard you know we need to use the money to make the biggest impact. I, and I, I re repeat that I, I see no flaw in that so long as it's in like the second tranche. If there's money left over from the first tranche, which is small business, not for profits, and also if there's money left over, then we can go to community projects. Many of the community projects that have been mentioned, I support, but I don't support using the, the COVID money, relief money, prior to using the money for what its initial intent is. And many of these projects municipally are, they, they should be, frankly, they should be funded out of the, out of the, uh, the general fund. So it's, 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 uh, it's another point. And last, I just want to, I think Mr. Michael mentioned that, uh, you know, it was brought up that someone, you know, we can take and separate by percentage. So much percentage for this, so much. I, I agree with Mr. Michael. I, I, that's, not a, that's not a good play. We, it's not necessarily equitable. You can't determine what's equitable by, by just setting random percentages. I think, as you mentioned, Mr. Laffin, um, that the application process is going to guide us, and I think guide us appropriately. And I would think that step by step. Let's put the application out for those three groups. Let's go through that process. 
I agree with the timeline. Our goal was to have something on the street by the end of February. We're quickly running out of time. But if we don't have money actively being distributed before summer, I think we're doing some of these businesses a disservice. We don't need to drag our feet. We, we, can, we can move the process along. I thank you very much again for your indulgence. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I agree with literally everything you said. Mr. Zandri, go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks. So I, I, I've taken in all of the the commentary this evening, just like I did the other night at the council meeting. It always it always makes me um, think think through what's been said, digest a little bit more, and and I have I have some additional comments that I want to make. And and I don't want anybody to misconstrue any of the commentary that I'm making now as being a rebuttal to anything. Treat it more like an add-on thought, because I. One of the things I don't want to have is this ending up sounding like a competition between anybody, nonprofit, small business, some bigger business that fits outside of the, the wheelhouse of, of what we might allow use of this money on. And I, I don't want that either. But, you know, a lot of the different things that have, that have been said really, really require additional thought. But, but wholeheartedly, I agree, we need to do something yesterday. All right. And I, and I, you know, again, I, I'm trying to be very neutral about pushing back against the administration and the long pauses it took before it executed anything and what it decided to execute on was getting a consultant, which we have to pay to do this work, where I feel, I feel large in part that we could get done with a lot of the nonprofits chipping in their expertise anyway. So I, I wanna, and so I'm saying that to try to keep it from becoming political on top of that. So. I, I want to kind of stress the idea that I don't think anybody escaped the impact of COVID. I mean, I, I acknowledge that some people got hit hard. I will I will acknowledge that some people maybe didn't get really hit at all financially. Um, maybe even their businesses, depending on the, the, the business they had, might have even benefited from the situation. You know, home delivery businesses may have picked up for the for, you know, during the situation when all the restaurants were closed. Um, I think what we have to keep in mind here is that the situation with the pandemic and then some of the actions and maybe at some levels the potential overreactions of the government caused some problems. There were some businesses that got closed down that in my personal opinion, and that's all that it is, didn't need to be closed. Very small businesses with, with the, the one proprietor and one person coming and going and another person coming and going almost appointment like didn't need to be closed down and i don't want to pontificate too much on that um but what i do want to say is that the town was impacted by covid um and so we'll stay away from the pool for a minute okay the wallace parking lot got impacted by covid as far as i'm concerned the the materials that that we bid and got quotes on increased by 30%. And that is because of supply chain issues, that is because of labor, that is because of a whole host of things, and a good portion of it was COVID. So to sit, to make the argument that we cannot do improvements to the town with this money, I, I think is not fair. Because if we do that parking lot and more people have the ability to come and park, it might benefit those businesses that are in that area. I don't know whether or not investing the money there would be better than handing them each a subset of what they are proving as losses and letting them go ahead and try to draw their own business. What good might it do if they've got nowhere to park their customers? So there's always gonna be this give and take. Um, I do have some concerns with the smaller side of business ownership that we're looking at 25 employees or less what got mentioned at one point was you know we've got these large public companies large pub a lot of large public companies are franchise owners they're small businesses dunkin donuts is huge the group that owns that owns the five of them in town are small they were negatively impacted for a while can we make the argument that gee they might need some help if I drive down Route 5 at 9 o'clock, the cars are backed up on Route 5. So it's going to be kind of hard to say we need to make them whole. 
they've returned. Now, were they impacted? Sure, but they've returned. So there's, this is going to go all over the place under over analysis and paralysis if we try to do this. I, I do have some concerns with limiting the businesses. If we take some 100-person businesses or 150-person businesses and are able to help them with something that might be um, more of a capital improvement type thing, then those businesses, you want to talk about trickle down. If you help a business with 150 employees and they can now focus on their employees less than having to worry about something that something's on their property or something that's adjoining them at the road that's part of the utility system or whatever scenario you might come up with, you're going to impact 150 employees. They may have more hours. They may get more overtime. They may be able to get a raise, and that goes forward too. I, I really think that um, the idea that there's going to be leftover money, I have a concern with that, even, even if you plan out the buckets. We're going to spend so much now, so much here, and so much later. Each one of those buckets is going to get consumed as well. I, I really want to make sure that we understand that we should be driving for the biggest impact to all. And those impacts to all can be best served where there are multipliers, like I was mentioning before. The ability for these businesses to be able to, the ones that are still negatively affected, the ones that were hamstrung so badly that even all the current business isn't helping them out. They're not able to hire people. And again, we can't hire people if we can't afford the salaries and, we, and, if, and if we can't get the child care. This is all um, tied together. We need to find that balance. And I hate to use the term that a rising tide lifts all boats, but it could here. Because as you make all these improvements with this is found money from the federal government, we're never going to get a chance like this again to, to address certain things. I'll, I'll go back to Wallace, Wallace parking lot. If, if the big gripe is it's 70,000 over, then let's shim the 70,000 out. If the big gripe on the pool is it was a million dollars more than we wanted to spend out of the capital budget and or that we wanted the bond, then let's shim a million dollars that way. Um, if it makes sense, if there, because we could be looking at things that are gonna lift up other people. If SCOW can use the money because they've got a handful of programs that do after school, then let's let's get them the money. The United Way's got programs, we can do that too, but we, what we do need to do is start the movement, start the action. So I, I really would like us to figure out what's next and just execute. Um, thank you, uh, thank you, Tom. Great. Any other counselors have questions or comments you wanna add, opinions that you wanna add to everything that we've heard from the public? Yes, no. I mean, otherwise, I'm thinking, oh, go ahead, Councillor Tess. Um, I, I, uh, I appreciate what Mr. Michael said. Great point. Um, I would only, I guess the reason I, I'm thinking the way I am is I've seen many projects come and go in town. And many times the number is arbitrary. But then, but whatever the number is, becomes important. I've seen it in school projects. I've seen it in many things, and by that I mean you put a number out, and then that becomes what everybody works on. So, if again, if we revert back, if we if we start with what our what I believe our role is, and that is to establish the overarching priorities, we can say percentage wise, this is how we want to allocate this money. So right now, everybody's looking at this and saying, we have $13 million. That's the starting point. Everyone's shooting for 13 million. If I say to any individual interest group, you have eight, go after eight. You have four, you have three, you have two. That's no different than where we are right now. But we all say, you have 13. Everyone's going after 13. So when you say, well, what happens if this particular group 
is allocated $4 million, but they only express a need for two. That's really not a problem because the group that was allocated nine and 13 wanted it can certainly take up the slack. That's when you go back to the big picture and put it back into the pool. We, we can deal with things like that. I, keep, I just want to keep reverting back to what I said in originally. We need to decide as a, we're our job as the representatives of the community, the overall, not the representatives of business community. That's Mr. Ryan's job, not the representatives of the nonprofits, not the representatives of this or that. Our job is the representatives of the community with the fiduciary responsibility for the money that's come in. Our job is to establish the overall priority and decide, I think in the interest of everybody, I would like to see us distribute this according to this formula. And then as we move, move along, we can adjust every other month because we found that this didn't, you know, these people didn't need as much money. This group didn't need as much money. Not a problem. And the last thing I will say is this. Um, I do understand what Mr. Ryan's point about um, how this all originated and so forth and so on. But there is no other group. Well, I shouldn't say that. There were, there were, there were payments out to individuals that we all received. Uh, but my point is there was a lot of other money available to businesses. There were other programs where businesses received money. And far be it for me to sound like I'm anti-business. I've never made a decision on the council that anyone could point to as being anti-business. So I'm not going to go there. All I'm saying is to, to, we need to recognize that there are many businesses that received money through other programs that were available. And if there is still a need, then great. But I think we, we need to, to still look at the big picture and say, we can impact every, potentially every area of our community. And how do we want to do that? And, I, I, and if we decide that that's too hard to do, then we can, we're, 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 we're where we are now. We can just throw in the towel and say, you know what, well, let's, let's let, it, let it go where it's going. We have an opportunity, and I would say a responsibility, to make a decision on this. And then I don't, I don't think it's too hard to make it work is a legitimate excuse to not do it. Thanks. Great. Thank you. Um, Councilor Allenson. I don't think anybody here has said that it's too hard to make it work. So, uh, you know, I, I do think that like this is literally us doing what we've been charged to do by discussing with the community how we should take charge of this money. So nobody has ever proposed that we do nothing because it's hard. We're doing the hard thing literally right now. So, um, you know, and we keep talking about the charge and what, what we're doing, and that's what we're ironing out, but we can't do it unilaterally, unilaterally without discussion. And to also circle back, we actually can't discuss these things privately amongst ourselves and come back because it's not, it's not allowable under FOI. So um, I, you know, we're doing the best we can with lots of competing priorities and we're going to hash it out and and some people will agree with us and some people won't and but we're here doing the hard work presently so um hopefully this um having this open conversation with um so many impactful community members is 
helping to get to a place where uh, the community understands that. All right, so then what do I want to do now? So there's basically, there's three things that have been thrown out there, right? One is, and maybe they can be a combination thereof. Um, we move forward with applications. We just allot some money out right now. And you know, I said three, I don't know what the third one was. Um, we, oh, we decide the percentages and the priorities uh, just based on this conversation. Um, so I guess what I from one of the, the other four counselors in this is we need some sort of motion to go. I mean, I've, I think my preference would be to expedite the application process so that we could figure out what then our priorities need to be as far as then divvying up what goes in each bucket. Um, and I'm not advocating that we review those applications that we will, uh, we can figure out who will do that. But um, that my preference is, I don't even know, I mean, like it's been said, you know, what if I said, well, let's give 50% to business and we find out they only needed 35. I think it'd be better to get an idea of how overwhelming or underwhelming each of the categories is. And this, with this application process, I would, I would suggest that we, we throw in things like the pool or um, other projects in town that so that just we can see everything in its entirety um, in order to accomplish that my suggestion uh, not seeing any other comments is to or counselor tower after um, is that we push we go to, to mr. Regan and we'd say uh, mr. Reagan um, tighten up that that proposal send it to us so that we can look at it and then we're going to meet again in you know a week or whatever that we can have depending on how long it takes him to do that and then be ready to go he had indicated that it would take he and his team anywhere from one to two weeks from go to kind of get everything online um and we would also coordinate that uh notification process into the electric the next electric bills we'd have to to work all those else out but um that way it keeps moving now if in the meantime people think we need to throw Five hundred thousand dollars here and five hundred thousand dollars there. To, um, I mean, I guess let's talk about it. But uh, that's that's <laughs> Councilor Tata. You had your hand up. Yeah, thank you. I think um, I I would not be in favor of rolling out this application process because I think once you when you an application is saying here's money available and we want you to apply. And yes. so we don't know how much we're going to give, or if we don't know if we have enough to give. Why are we? Why would we encourage someone to apply for something that they may never get? And I, you know, if even if we only would, were to roll that out to businesses, let's say let's say that's what happened, I would I would bet almost anything that the entire thirteen million dollars would be gone. If we look at how much money Wallingford businesses got in PPP, which is all you know public record. Um, I believe, I, I have to double check myself, but I believe Wallingford Business has got $144 million. So in the scheme of things, um, you know, I just think it's, I'm just not in favor of rolling out an application that we don't know if we could ever fund. Because an application to me, if business owners are taking time, um, you know, gather, gathering their documents, taking all this time out of their day to apply for something, and then we say, oh, <laughs> oops, sorry, we didn't know, you know, we were going to have $100 million dollars um applied for then what do we do so i just think it's premature to to roll out an application um in that way well I, in my in my take on it is an application is not is not guaranteed granting it, it's to you are saying that i believe i'm qualified or cap, you know capable of receiving x amount of dollars for this reason and then we would determine whether they get any all or none of it See that works, so that, and that's another huge problem for me. Huge problem. Okay. If if somebody right, if we say here's the program, apply for a program, and we may or may not give you money. Correct. Who's choosing at that point? Who is and is not getting money? But we're going to um, decide that. I, I don't want to decide that. I don't okay. think that is. You don't I, want any of us to decide, or you personally don't want to decide it. I don't think or, that's the council's decision. I think um, I. I'm very nervous that if we go that route, 
how are we to say, you know, who got money, who didn't get money? Um, the guy next door got 5,000. Why did I only get 2,000? Uh, you're friends with this one. He got money because he knows someone. I don't, I don't think the council should be involved in that at all. Um, and if, if there are going to be, you know, people who get money and don't get money, I think we need to very, very specifically set that out before any application goes out as to who's the deciding um, party, what the, you know, deciding factors are. Um, that, that's been a big concern of mine with this from the get-go. So I, again, I just think it's, I'm, I'm just not in favor of rolling out that application right now, but, you know, obviously I'm, I'm just one of us, so, you know, happy to hear what everyone else thinks. No, I, I, I get it, and I think part of it, uh, for me, deciding without uh, any other voting, um, I roll the application, and within that time period that we're getting feedback on the application, that we're giving feedback on the application that they're implementing, we would have met a couple more times at least and determined exactly the structure of who will be granting. Um, you know, the the what I mentioned in one of the first meetings was that these nonprofits um, they give out grant money all the time. They 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 apply for grant money. They receive grant money and they give out grant money all the time. So they're experienced with that. We also have other community members are that as well. Uh, an organization like Rotary may not be requesting any money, but Rotary gives out tens of thousands of dollars all the time every year. Um, full, they're full of board members that, that do this all the time and have been for decades. Um, so it's things like that, that that we would determine not necessarily tonight, but that that specificity we would decide at a later. That's that's my line of thinking anyway. If I was going with that route. Any questions, Councillor Testa? Thank you, Mr. Mr. Lappin. What I would like to see happen is us decide what we're doing. Why do we exist as a committee? If we're going to just let follow the process that's already in place, we don't have a reason for existing. I brought up things, I'm not going to keep saying it, I've said it a hundred times, at multiple meetings. And at multiple meetings, people said, well, let's have a committee, let's have a committee. And I kept saying, well, what's the committee going to do? Is the committee going to be making decisions on approving applications? No. Why are we here? So that's why I keep saying, let's have a chart. Let's decide on what our charge is. If we are not, what I would like to see us do tonight, or at least begin tonight, is what I asked. Establish priorities for how this money is going to be distributed. If we're not going to do that, we don't really have any reason for existing. Well, why are we even a committee? It's going to all come to the council anyway. So tonight, there's five of us here. What do we want to do? I want to hear from the councilors. What do we want to do? Do we want to do what I'm asking? Do we not want to do what I'm asking? And if not, that's okay too. That's what we're here for tonight. Why do we exist as a subcommittee? I think we exist as a subcommittee. Okay, I appreciate it. That's what I want us to focus on. Yeah. I think we exist as a subcommittee to, like you said, determine the priorities. Uh, and I think in order to determine the priorities, I think it's fair or the best route to, to send out the applications, get it back, and then determine 30% here, 40% there, 10% there. And maybe we don't allocate a percent to government projects at that point, but maybe we we look at the whole pie and we're like, you know what, $4 million here um, to do this. I don't know. But I think in order to have to set the priorities, I would like the applications. But I think that we should be the ones setting those priorities. I think our charge is to set those priorities. I'm just the step before setting the priorities. Councillor Tetta. Thank you. Um, I agree with Councillor Tetta. It's just it's kind of difficult to decide how to work, you know, how to, to do that. But um, one, one thing I wanted to bring up, we were talking about, you know, government projects and what percentage and if we're going to be deciding priorities or percentages. Um, just one thing I might want to bring up. If we went 
the application route, or even if we didn't, um, you know, who applies for a government project? Does does the public apply? Does, does the public say, oh, I want community pool, and then we take a tally? I mean, I think, you know, I think it was clear from the last meeting that, um, you know, the administration has a certain way they would like this to go. And so if there are um, departments who maybe have ideas of projects, um, I'm not sure what department head would, would, you know, feel comfortable submitting a survey saying, oh, I would like, you know, this project if, if the administration has, you know, kind of made it clear that that's not the route they want them to go. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm just fearful that we may not hear um, ideas of what those projects could be if we, if we were to go that route. So, um, I don't know, to Councilor Testa's point, I guess maybe I'll just throw this out there. What if we, what if we were to decide tonight that we want 50% to go to government projects and then the other 50% we have go for, um, you know, something else? Just, just to throw out something. Councilor Testa, do you want to speak? Well, there's just five of us, so yes. I don't know if I'd go along with that. Uh, but I think, now, see, we, Councilor Clef and what you said um, gives me encouragement. Because I think we're all trying to get to the same point. We are, yeah. Um, so if we left here tonight and said, we, we want to, we are going to establish the spending priorities. However, when we make that decision, is still up in the air. I'm not gonna fight about that. See what I'm getting at? Yep. I just don't want it. I don't want us to go forward where we're not doing that. So no. I see where you're going. You're saying, and others are saying, let's hear from the the public. Let's hear from the world, and let's hear what the needs are, and then we can per potentially make some priority decisions. I'm a little nervous about that. But at least we're getting closer to agreeing on what our role is as a council, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fight about that until midnight. Um, I just want to, you know what I mean? Yeah. I just I so I appreciate that you said that. Um, like I said, I don't. We're not gonna solve everything tonight, but I would I would be m more encouraged if we as a council made some kind of had some kind of agreement that. We are going to be establishing some spending priorities at some point, and that's not the same as we are going to be approving applications. Those are two different things. Yeah. And if we all said maybe we can't agree tonight on when we establish those priorities, I'm okay with that too. This is the first time we've met. I'm glad that we exist. I just want to make sure we have a reason to exist and that we continue to, you know, who work along those lines. So I don't think we have to get real specific tonight. If we can all agree that, you know, what I, what I just talked about, um, that's for what it's worth. Thank you. Great. Any other questions or comments from counselors before I say anything again? I feel like I'm talking a lot. Councilor Tata. <laughs> yeah, me too. I just, <laughs> things are coming up. I just, um, you know, I just, I'm concerned that we're, you know, just kicking the can down the road again, because now we're like, let's say we leave tonight and we say, okay, we're going to establish priorities after we've heard from, you know, everyone who's on here and, and then we have another meeting next week. And then, you know, the same points are made again and then the same people show up and the same thing. I mean, what, I don't know. I don't know where, when we actually make a decision and I'm, I'm looking at these other towns and what they're doing and um, it just doesn't seem that hard in, in some other towns. So, you know, like Meriden, they, they, uh, they spent 2.2 million. I, I know they have a lot more money than than we do, you know, in ARPA money. But you know, they spent 2.2 million just last week. They, their um, council, I believe, decided they were going to, you know, resurface some resurface some basketball courts. They put in new pickleball courts, and they gave 150 thousand to um, a nonprofit. So I, I'm, I don't know. I don't know when this ends. I don't know when we're going to actually make a decision or how how we're going to leave here tonight and decide. Um, I know I've already, you know, talked to a lot of people in the past week. I made a point to, you know, to to get some info and try to find out what the needs are. So I feel like I have a, you know, fairly good grasp on it. So um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm just, I don't know when, when this ends or when we actually make a decision. And so if anyone has any, any ideas on when, when or how we're going, going to get to that, I'd love to hear it. Thanks. Anybody else before I answer with my thoughts? Councillor Allenson. Um, I, <clears throat> so I guess I just, I'm, I'm having a, I have a, like a question because, um, if individual businesses or individuals in general, um, have the funds opened up for them, and I don't know if this is a question we can actually answer tonight, um, or if this is a question that's another, like, food for thought, but, um, is if we ask them to apply through our this process that we as it exists presently not that it's going to exist forever nobody get crazy um as it exists presently and then we say okay well we're gonna like and then we also say okay we would also like to make sure to prioritize uh nonprofits. how how do we ensure that the individual or business isn't like double dipping from that or do we prioritize nonprofits to say please apply for whatever like please apply for the amount and then have the nonprofits run through or or uh nonprofits as in like uh wallingford center inc or the economic development the economic development department um do we have them then disperse down to the more individual needs? Because if we're saying we don't want to review applications, well, that's also not the charge of uh, the consultant. Um, so somebody's going to have to do them. My concern is we have all these people apply through the town of Wallingford, but then it looks like we're going to give all their money actually to nonprofits that will then disperse them so like how does that work exactly do we prioritize nonprofits and then tell them please apply for your grants through this if you're a business or this if you're an individual um and i also think we should as as a team determine do we want to set an amount like we will disperse half of it now as in you know we'll take out you know we'll, we'll and we'll save half of it till till we know what the need is um a little bit better and i i'm i'm having trouble uh verbalizing what i'm thinking because it's just it's a lot of it's a lot of things going around but my it's it's more like i really like the idea of having the department of economic development wallingford center inc uh united way scow I like the idea of having them apply as as a group entity because they are the ones who are talking to businesses and know the needs. Why not say these are your avenues to apply for grants from for more individual needs? We are taking nonprofit, um, you know, we are taking this from uh, from a larger perspective so that we can track this is how this was spent you know this money was spent we we sent it to the nonprofit for relief of individuals and then the nonprofit is then tracking what they're giving through their own grant application process which can then be tracked back to us so um i am i'm hesitant also to be going through a th thousands of applications but that is not the consultant's job. So we are not going to pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars. Their job is literally to vet the applications for applicability. And that is all done through an algorithmic process. It is not done by one person hand going through the whole thing. You filter it down to who is applicable and who might be applicable, and that's it. You're not paying people tons of money now that we have spreadsheets and um, you know the cap the electronic capabilities you know and i know we we know we don't really know that sometimes in wallingford but some of us do work in that industry so um it's it's i i do think that we we should earmark this on a high level 
not um and and then have the more individual needs go through um these individual and ent these entities that serve the individual <clears throat> and that's that's my thought on the process great all right so i'm gonna try and give a little structure um I do. I do want. I did want to respond. Uh, something Councilor Tata had said before. Before I get to the other part, the the challenge with will the administration even submit government projects? I guess that's relative. Anyway, no matter what we do, if if we said no, we're giving, you know, 10% to government projects. He, if if he was going to be that stubborn or committed to the idea, he would say, I don't have any. I mean, regardless, he would he would just throw up his hands. We've seen. Um, him stick to his guns if, if that's a polite way of saying it um like that before so i'm uh if we are going to look to get project money um we there will we have to find another way to amass that information in the first place um and and uh, whether anybody likes it or not it, it probably does include working with the administration on on that type of thing but so what I'm, what I'd recommend, um, and I'm used to making motions and stuff, but I'm gonna, I'm trying to run the meeting. So maybe to entertain a motion to establish the charge of the subcommittee of the town council to determine the spending priorities of the ARPA funds. So moved. Moved and seconded. Okay. Uh, oh, moved by Sandry, seconded by Testa. The idea being, let's uh, keep it simple. I thought what Councillor Tessa said in the beginning was was right. Like, let's just let's come up with a charge, and then the very next thing we'll try and focus on getting the next step towards you know moving the moving the boat down the river just a little bit. Um, is are there any comments on the motion from any of the five councillors? Councillor Tessa. Um, when would you see us do that? Or are you just saying we're agreeing that that's going to be what our kind of overarching yeah objective. we're agreeing that that's the charge and then the meeting's not over just yet um unless we want it to be oh, yes it uh, is. we would jump to the next <laughs> but the charge will be done that that's locking in we are well you know one of the things i, I think i'd say this earlier um counselor test and this isn't to um you know brown nose or anything that you, you've been consistent in the beginning with you wanted a you wanted to say you want a participation in this and i think what we're doing now with this motion is saying that we not only do we want to say we're taking the say that we're going to determine the priorities and we're going to determine how it's those priorities are are met or executed um so we might not decide exactly who's going to review the applications tonight but we can at least start all the balls moving um that we need to um um, that's that's my thought anyway that with with the direction that we need to go and hopefully this charge will will do that it's kind of communicating that we are taking that the five of us are taking that on well i'm in favor, in favor of that thank you um what happens if the full council does not agree with um either this motion or our final determination are we is this so I'm I'm already afraid that this committee is going to take a long time, um, and then I'm afraid that it, let's say we we do we you know we have eight meetings and we decide and everything gets good and then we go to the full council and the other four say whoa no <laughs> so we don't want to do this and then we're back at square one. No, because there's five of us, five five votes to do anything on the council. There you go. Right, right. but so let's say all right. So let's, let's say five. Christina disagrees with everything we're doing. No. Who? Let's say Christina disagrees with everything we're doing. Well, let's say it goes to the full council and then there's a, you know, and there's a meeting and I don't know, let's say Joe Marone has a very persuasive argument about why we were completely wrong. And then I change my vote and it's like, I don't know, Joe, maybe Joe's right. Maybe, maybe I don't want to vote with what the committee voted for again. And then you don't have the five. Totally just, possible, not, but they I'm can come saying, to these meetings too. I'm just, I'm not trying to be, you know, difficult. I just, I'm very concerned at the timeline already, and I, I'm afraid that you know we're gonna have more meetings and hear from you know 
I think we're just going to keep hearing the same arguments every single time from us and from others. And then, you know, it's going to take even longer and it's longer that these groups and these people don't have money or it's longer that we have, if we want to put it towards projects because you have to, you know, start spending, I think within the two years and then it gets to the full council and then we hear all the same arguments all over again. I'm just, I'm concerned about the timeline, I guess. Um, no, so I'm not, I'm not uh, opposed to the motion. I just, um, those are my concerns right now. Fair point. I'm confident that we will persevere. Uh, Councilor Allenson. I just wanted to say, um, I think, I, I, I mean, I do understand we kind of need to, we, it, it would be really difficult for us to just make a motion that we're going to make our, like, the purpose of this is to create our charge. And then we don't create a charge like but i also understand the need uh, from like christina's perspective to give people a little time to uh maybe like get feedback from our other counselors and they're i mean under the new council rules we still do have a, a day to ask, 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 ask for um the an agenda item to be added where we discuss with the full council an abbreviated version of what we've talked about here and then say how do you see this before we come back for another meeting next week and create our charge and so like you know i do i am the one who brought up the need for expeditious uh timing on dispersing these funds however i also recognize the need for the feedback from our peers so i say that we have a conversation with the other members of the council um, describing what we hash out tonight as what we see our charge is and then we get feedback from them to make a decision on what the actual charge is next week without further belaboring the discussion. Might I recommend then that we put together what we accomplished tonight as a report to the other counselors and if any of the other four have a problem or questions that they can ask that the report be presented at the next full meeting and then we can discuss it that way because if there's no if they look over the three things we did and they're good with it then let's just keep moving i just don't want to get caught up because we have a committee of five and it's five of us for a reason um and whether they have a fear of missing out or they didn't volunteer I don't know, uh, Councillor Carmody is or was here. Um, I agree with the count. Was, we we technically yeah. have six who are physically aware of what's going on right, right. now. So, right. And there, maybe Councillor Carmody doesn't agree or whatever, or one of us won't. But I I definitely think that that's why this is being established. So. Yeah. And when I've run subcommittees before, any council that showed up um, was allowed to participate just the same um just the focus and the voting was on the was on the actual community members yeah. and so we're, uh tessa and then tata again i only say i um i i totally appreciate councillor tata's tata's oh my god councillor tata's um i don't want to say cynicism but concern about oh uh, yeah how long is this going to last but yeah i think i can fairly say that no one is potentially more cynical about this whole process than I have been. So I'm optimistic about what we've accomplished tonight. I, I and I want to say I I agree with a lot of what Councillor Ellenson said earlier, not too long ago, about how we do this kind of stuff. Um, well, I think there's a I think a lot has happened tonight. The, shows that we we all are kind of on a similar track of how we want to see this done and we've got some work to do but remember yesterday we didn't exist a month ago two months ago three months ago we didn't exist we talked about existing but we didn't exist so we exist now so tonight we kind of said hey we we can accomplish something so you know i think you know don't get nervous. <laughs> I'm willing to be a little patient about this, and I think we're in pretty good shape. Um, as far as the other counselors go, we're a subcommittee. We write our own charge. 
we wrote it, we, it, it exists, and we let them know what we did tonight and, um, and ask for their input, how they'd like to see us move forward. And we're, we're kind of doing the legwork of um, having those extra meetings so agenda items don't go for 12 hours. Um, and I think we're in pretty good shape after one meeting. I'm, I'm kind of optimistic about this. So nice job, everybody. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Councilor Tedder. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Tedder. Well, I, I appreciate your optimism. I'll try to have a, a more positive outlook maybe. Um, but I just want to say too about um, the report. Um, I don't know if it's safe, I don't know if, if you were going to have to write the report or who was going to have to write this report, but um, if it saves any time, I think I think Deb is on here. Um, so if, if the town clerk is doing minutes, then I would suggest that the other counselors can just review those minutes and then we don't need to to duplicate, you know, a report. Um, Even better. I was going to volunteer you to do it. Well, this is what? Lappin's job. Lappin yeah, does it. I, I, I thought you were doing it, so I was trying to save you some time. But, um, Lappin. yeah, that might just be Esther, easy. You're all static. I can't hear anything you're saying. It's, But I think, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think uh, the meeting's recorded as well. They can watch the whole thing. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, so less, less work and um, we'll... Um, just wanted to point that out that I think Deb has been on, so thank you. Councilor Testa. May I say one more thing? Yeah. I just want to thank all of the folks that are here, still here. I'm looking at the screen, Maria, Liz, um, uh, Joe, Sean, um, Tim, you're all here and um, I'm hopeful that you are feeling um a little bit better that you know your your positions are being heard and i i re, i appreciate you being here and sitting through this and presenting your cases and uh that's all thank you and i want to assure you that everything you've all said is in my mind and i'm trying to be continue to be as open minded as i can so thank you all very great words Seeing no other questions or comments, we'll go to a vote on the motion. Again, that is a motion to establish the charge of this subcommittee of the Town Council of Longford to determine the spending priorities of the ARPA funds. And I did not write everybody out alphabetically, so I'm just going to go the way it's on my screen. Sorry. Uh, Councilor Tata. Yes. Councilor Zandri. Yes. Councillor Allenson. Yes. Councillor Testa. Yes. And I vote yes as well. All right, job number one done. We can stop there. Or uh, my next idea was to, to push forward, to go back and say, um, we want to see the, not in a PowerPoint, we want to see like handed in, this is what the, the application ideas would be now we can throw the, all of them out we might not even do the individual one but see what they are we get them we review them all in the meantime to the next meeting when we're going to get together and also at that meeting um and if we need another one right after that i mean i'm trying to i know this might be a lot of meetings but i'm just trying to keep things moving um we would then determine who is actually going to review each level of the applications if we decide to go that way or maybe we, I mean, I, I mean, I was okay with the applications. I know some of the people weren't or, or thought it was daunting or overwhelming, but I think, I still think that's the way we need to get an idea of what, I, the, the need is out there. Let's figure out what percentage needs to go where, and then we'll be able to determine at that point what the priorities are, are going to be. I don't, um, I don't know if somebody wants to make that emotion or if somebody wants to twist that around or provide different feedback. I'm just trying to keep things moving forward. Councilor Allenson. Just, you know, to up, up my talking time, you know, give you some relief here. Um, the, I, I think that we should definitely establish that we need some definition of what the application process is going to look like, and we need to review it as it currently is, you know, um, in that iteration, because I did hear um, the comments of, I believe it was Craig, in the meeting that said, well, who's to say a larger business doesn't need relief? 
Um, I do think that we we need to take all of those things into consideration and specifically scratch or modify things that um, the things that we would like to change about it. So I will make it a motion that we no. I don't think there's a motion. We, we, uh, I don't think there's any motion. Your, uh, our Palmer Inter procedure guide too. Do we need to make it a motion or can we just I don't think so. We just yeah. we just need to make we just need to make the request for the information by yeah. next meeting so that we can review it in a timely manner. So, Does anybody have an objection to that? No, I don't have an objection, but I, I, I want to make an additional comment kind of piggybacking on that. And this is this is where it gets very slippery, right? I mean, just going just really fast, going over the, the PPP loan data, there's there was a company of 20 people that got almost $700,000 from, from that loan program. Then if I go farther down the list, a company with 117 employees got 81,000. So it's gonna be very hard to say, gee, only companies under 25 people should even be eligible for this because they're the ones that are worst impacted. I, I, I disagree with a blanket statement like that. It all depends on how, what, their, what their situation was when the federal government shut them down. I, so I, I, I think we really need to expand, make it wide open, let them plead their case in, and let us whittle it out or I agree. whomever. I, I agree I with you. Is a bad number, and I'm hoping that when we, when we get the actual, you know, our request is fulfilled and we have that in front of us, we can go through and either scratch that number off, remove the whole question. Um, and and uh, Liz Davis did comment in the chat. I know that doesn't end up in the record, but uh, and, and it's been mentioned before as well, I think, that we sh one of the questions should be, did you receive any PPP money, you know, during the pandemic in general? Because that, that could be a factor. Not that, well, not that, that it's a that and the other, factor. But yeah, it's, that, and the other, that and the other small business loans, too. I didn't even have a chance to go through the other one yet. This was, this was enough, just looking at this data. Yeah, so I 100% I agree that, it, that it, that's, that's what I want to see those as presented. You know, what, what are... What's the application going to look like so that we can, with a red pen, fix them? Because now we're going to, you know, decide those priorities, Councilor Testa. I think at some point we need to have it established that we have the authority to do that, or it's going to be respected. I thought at the last meeting it was pointed out with the charter that we were all good with that. You mean like versus us, legislative versus? Oh, we're talking about what we want to do. Yeah. At some point, let's get it established that <laughs> someone's going to listen to us. Sure. So we'll request. Um, it's very important. And then um, you want a final in writing from legal. Well, I want it established that you know we're talking about. I don't. How how much how involved do I want to get in the review of these applications? Well, it should be established that I have the authority to do that in the first place and that my decision is going to be honored to somewhere along the way the legality of all this should be established then we're going to work on the logistics of it I just say all the okay, there's the cynicism of me popping up again that's but, right no it's it's fine I, I think we'll get it up more we clear in a no. more clear statement or writing ahead of ourselves Anybody else? Councillor Tata. Thank you. Um, I may be in the minority here, but I don't, you know, I know I said it before, I don't really want to be involved in these applications. Um, I don't think it's a good way to, to gauge the need. I think an application says that, you you know, you're getting something. And um, so I'm not, I'm not really in favor of this at this point. I think if it, if we decided, you know, we wanted to put these applications out, I guess we would maybe have to look at them, but again, it's, you know, for the reasons I already stated, I'm just, I'm not for this at this point. Thanks. Putting the applications out would be a separate motion, like in another meeting. This this round is to ask for us to review them. You're the English major, right? We're counting on you to go through and with and the red I don't, I don't want to make the determination, um, of what's know, we, we were already talking about before, you know, are we going to red line and say 25 or not 25 employees are, and I don't think I just think it's, but I'm, I'm more, I guess what I'm saying is instead of applications and us even looking at applications, I'm more in favor of um, 
block grants, I guess we can say, to these, um, maybe to WCI and maybe to EDC, maybe to, um, you know, different groups like that, and then let them make their own applications, their own determination. Um, so I just, you know, in my opinion, I don't see me ever really being for this, these applications as they were presented already. So, um, yeah, I think, and that's why that's the benefit of us getting them. We can look through and be like, no, this is garbage. Um, and we want to do the, you know, the block grant, or maybe we need then another application that's not been discussed, which is to the nonprofits to say, okay, you want, you're going to ask for a pool of money, a block grant to give out the money. What are the areas or what is your audience that you're uh, going to target? I mean, that may be what we decide, but I don't, it, it should take like a day or two for them to just send us a Word document with what, what, what they've done so far, what they've been doing with all these other communities. Um, and we'll quickly be able to see. I agree. I, I could very, very easily be in favor of identifying the big five or the big six nonprofits in our community. And we have some, incredibly strong ones and just and having them dole out. I mean I've been I push stuff on nonprofits all the time, maybe unfairly, but um and then whether and maybe a nonprofit or an organization like EDC handles um a business component of it. Um I, I keep saying nonprofits. I don't mean to exclude um youth and social services. Um we can talk about that when we when we're deciding on that. I know that is a part of the administration of the government entity, but I think there are resources there. Um, between the staff and whatnot and uh, their connections uh, or maybe they more or less participate you know with each of the nonprofits I don't know but that's something to talk about maybe we'll invite I mean maybe we should invite them to to be here at one of these next meetings Councillor Allison no matter what we do as far as if we decide to do uh, to to divvy this out to nonprofits, um, like some of our government social services and things like that, there has to be an application and we're going to have to vet it. So like we don't, I mean, if we want to do that as a full council, fine. But then again, then I'm kind of like, well, then why are we here again? Because if our charge is to determine how we're going to do that, then we still like no matter what happens we can't have we can't just give the money to places and not in and relieve ourselves from the responsibility of tracking it so um i do think that the next step is to review the application and and using it with with the thought in mind of are we going to say individuals will go through these through nonprofits and that might help us to weed out how we want to um, create the disbursements or how like are we going to exclude the whole individual because we're going you know but if we if we we can't do that until we've reviewed the application to say the individual is being excluded so that the they're not getting money directly from the town they're getting it from the nonprofit um so it, yeah. through the, through the nonprofit's application process you know I, and let's not waste people's time Sorry. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking john it's okay i, I kept thinking you were almost done are done the i think part of it we may look at this and uh similar to what uh, mr ryan had said it, it may be tiered maybe we send out applications to hit up the nonprofits first or the organizations first. Maybe that's maybe that's the only application process we actually execute, and we get the information after that, and then we feel comfortable enough to determine priorities. We may never get applications from individuals or households, but based on what we do gather or collect from the um, nonprofits or organizations in town, we may determine, um, you know, SCOW, United Way, they may be able to tell us um, how many households they helped with heating or groceries and things like that. So then we can determine 10%, 20%, 30%, whatever it is, and then allocate who is going to give out that 30%. Our goal um, is to meet our charge right now. And uh, so we need to figure out how to get to the point where we're comfortable determining what percent is gonna go where. Um, on the side, we can we can point to how that gets executed, but our real goal, our objective right now is to determine how much of that money is spent where. 
and I do want to point out, like we keep saying percentage, and it really it's really not that we're trying to predetermine a percentage by my understanding. It's just that we don't know the need. So we don't know what is going where until we actually get to that point of the process. It's not my, because uh, I don't, I, I agree with um, the others who have said, we don't know what the percentage is gonna be is based on the need, but we do need to gather the information. And I think that where we start is to um, first, you know, uh, to Counselor Testa's point, we um, in, ensure that you know the administration is in agreement that this is you know our charge and um, you know not everybody agrees with with um, each other but you know at the end of the meeting it was very clearly stated that that was just a jumping off point and some you know I tend to be a little bit more eager and you know because I am newer. So I don't know a lot of this background of, um, you know, the feelings of slight and, and whatnot. Um, so I'm all for like moving forward, but I totally understand and appreciate the, the lens that we want to make sure that um, we're covered in that we don't just have this committee and then it's not going to be um, respected what we've decided. And I think that, um, and I think that having that conversation is the first step because my experience has always been one of, you know, reasonability um, with the mayor. So I think that if we explain what we're looking to do, and also that we're looking to take some of the onus off of the the town in, in micro tracking a lot of the grant applications for individuals. Um, it it will help um, to drive that forward, but we do need the, that, that first part of the charge and the second part of the charge to review and determine what is the scope of the application because nobody can get anything without applying for it. So that's that would be you know the next step from my opinion once once we've had that conversation with the mayor to say, this is what we're thinking and you know this is kind of the plan so sorry i think my timer's up hello oh sorry yeah. uh, you're not on mute caller that was not your timer yeah that's somebody oh. on the phone i got i get nervous i'm like now i'm talking tons so i don't know <laughs> but Sounds um, hard. i think i'm <laughs> muted everybody else got cool no it's fine i um I, I'm actually done, but I do. But these are doesn't the next steps like as I see them. Doesn't sound like you're done, but go ahead. It's fine. That's because I just constantly, I just want to keep going. It's my husband; he hates it. So, um, <laughs> that sounds but like a yeah, problem. that's those are the two things that I see as our next step. Um, so. <laughs> Welcome to the council. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I said that, Autumn? Like, yes, many, many, many. <laughs> Councilor Tata. Thank you. Um, I, so I don't, I don't want to belabor this, but I just, I don't feel like we have to look at the applications to to get to the final goal. I feel, um, again, my concern is that. So, and you know, to Councilor Allison's point, this is nothing against the mayor or against the administration. I get that you know he has certain goals, and that's you know what what we had presented thus far. But um, the if, if the applications were created with that goal in mind by the consultant and so um if we even if we look at them and we think they look great and they look wonderful it's still cutting out a huge segment of the population which is the segment that wants to you do some capital projects and um and again my my point with the capital projects is that i'm looking for things that have the widest um impact and you know, when I when I really think about that, how do you affect every single person in town? And I think the only way you do that is to reduce taxes or to do something that has a tax benefit. And so to me, um, capital projects, um, community projects, there are things that, you know, everyone can enjoy or, you know, certain people can enjoy. But even if, you know, let's talk about a splash pad, for example, maybe you don't go use a splash pad, but at least your taxes didn't have to pay for it. So it's free. 
Um, so, you know, that that's why I'm thinking spread it across every single taxpayer because that's really the only way you hit every single person. Um, that being said, if we look at these applications and if we're using the applications to gauge need, there's no way to gauge that need or that desire through the application process because like I said before, who, who applies for that? I mean, I can't go apply that I want the money spent on a splash pad or, you know, Mr. Savinelli can't go apply that he wants the money spent. Well, maybe he could in his capacity, but, but, um, you know, a, a general member of the public. And, and again, like I said before, I don't know how many department heads or how many people in town would feel comfortable even, you know, letting us know that publicly because, you know, if the administration, um, has said, you know, we, they wanted to go another direction, you know, and not, not faulting that, but, you know, is somebody going to go publicly say, no, I disagree with my boss. I'd rather, I think we need to spend it on this. I mean, that's the chances of that are very, very low. Um, and so again, this, this app, I don't think using this application process to gauge need is, is the right way to go. So I think we're premature in looking at applications, um, for that reason. Thanks. So if, if uh, there's a, a concern, uh, as you've stated, that the, the departments will not speak up, so then what is the solution to get around that? Because it's it's relative, right? Like I think, we, yeah. I think you know we I think we as counselors you know have have good relationships. I think we are pretty aware of you know the the pulse of the town and things that you know people have said they want and. Um, you know, things departments needs. I mean, we all go through the budget every year. We see things that are requested that, you know, don't happen or, or do happen. Um, so I, I think, I think we're elected for that reason. I think people elect us to make these decisions and to, to do what we think is best for the town and what the town wants. And so, um, you know, I, I, I think all, all nine of us have a pretty good, good feel for that. And I think, you know, maybe we just need to make, make those decisions based on um you know what we know just by by being elected officials so then could we with that understanding accepting that concept can we then you think then the counselors can propose or throw out a project in that next round assuming sure. that you eventually agree or we move forward with the application component yeah i think we can definitely start discussing i mean i think to start off this meeting, you know, I already threw out a list of things that, you know, requests I had received um, and different agencies that had, you know, that had, I had talked to that wanted things. So I think we can, I think we can start looking at those, sure. Okay. And then, uh, but you're, so you're, um, you're not comfortable with the uh, application process. Do you not want us to move forward with it? Do you want to make a motion to set priorities right now? Or do you want to wait and see with the rest of us what comes back for the next meeting? I'm just trying to like keep it moving. I mean, if you know, if everybody else wants to take a look at the applications, I, I mean, I guess we can, but I just don't want to. I just want to be forthcoming and let everyone know that I have basically very little intention of moving forward with those applications. If the point of them is to gauge need, I don't think that's the appropriate way to go. Okay. Councilor Testa, sorry, you've been raising your hand. No, that's what, no. I'm just when, when the time came. I think. Um, I think the um, reviewing applications, for example, can be a very meaningful way of gauging need within certain blocks. You know, I mean, if we said we're going to take applications so that we can figure out the overall need requirements of the town before we set priorities, I totally understand where Councillor Todd is coming from. He said, "Well, the who the hell's going? Excuse me, who's going to represent?" you know, the, the, the community needs that we might think are important. But we can we can say, we're not exactly sure where everything's coming from, but let's move forward with the understanding that um, we as a council are going to be, we're gonna be the determining factor as to what the community needs are gonna be. That's what we do. Um, we're not gonna rely upon a department head or a commission to ask, because we know what they're gonna ask for, we already know. But like we do every year budget time, it's our job to set the priorities for what we spend our money on for the community. So maybe soon 
when we get to that point where we say we have decided that X percent is going to be set aside for the community community spend expenditures, we're going to then we're then going to pour over that and and spend time on that as a council and determine how we're going to do that. Who knows what's going to happen? We may say X community pool. I want a skate park. I didn't even bring it up tonight. We could bring up so many things. Um, but meanwhile, the um, the other interest groups, if you will, the other experts uh, are going to be gauging the need. And hopefully, we will have established a way that they can be reviewing and approving applications so that we're, on appro we're not approving every application that comes in. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I think I think we can move forward. I'm trying to be the one who says, "Hey, let's try to compromise a little bit and make it happen." You know, you know what I would like to do. Um, but I think we can move forward um, and say we're. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying. I think we're pretty good right now. Let's. If, if we want to review application or we want to let the applications go out there to gauge need, I think we can acknowledge tonight that's not going to that's not going to define a hundred percent of the needs. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little tired here. No, so that's I, I, I think too that we will determine we what the what the community needs or community not needs are priorities are going to be when we when we divvy it all up. Yeah, I'm talking too much. Sorry. No, it's uh, and I think you know we talk about whether you know nonprofits will determine needs of businesses or individuals. I think it's I'm very comfortable that if there are government or capital projects that it is the five of us or the full council then that would determine that once once we get that allotment out. Um, I don't know that there's anybody else suited for that. That that 100% would be us if we go in that direction. Um, but I want to know how much of that pie we should take, if any. And I think the application process will help. Um, but again, I think a lot of this is, is going to lean on these organizations and nonprofits to, to help us out with that. All right, so are there any other questions or comments we're going to ask for the current going? It sounds like as we're going to ask for those applications uh, as they stand. Um, we'll edit them, come back and discuss whether we want to use any of them, toss them out, modify them, send one out. And wait to hear back before maybe we just send the nonprofits out first. I don't know. Um, and then um, during that time, if everybody could be thinking about when you're reviewing the applications, those drafts, um, who exactly you think would best be suited um, to give those out. And maybe the nonprofits that are here now and the other ones that are going to hear about this. Come to us if you think that you have the resources and the experience. And the connections to to appropriately disperse the funds um, come back and be ready to tell us how. And um, maybe that's maybe that's the the first application we send out. How would you do it? And how much do you think you need? Any other questions, comments, or concerns? No. All right. Uh, thank you uh, very much. I'm going to declare the meeting over. Thanks. Thanks. Have a good night. Good night, everybody.